What is up, you guys? The sponsor of today's podcast is Surfshark. Get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deal slash alanized. Enter promo code alanized, that is A-L-A-N-N-I-Z-E-D for 83% off and three extra months free. That's surfshark.deal slash alanized. Enter promo code A-L-A-N-N-I-Z-E-D for 83% off and three months free for free i get a lot of shit for it sometimes because people are always just like why are you influencing moms to like leave their, their baby daddy hello everyone and welcome to another episode i'm your host alanized and this is noche de pendejadas como pudieron ver la semana pasada les traje a las hermanas aguilar y esta semana les traigo a una invitada que no los va a decepcionar please help me welcome my guest tonight elsie guevara Woo! did i butcher that bitch did I say it right? Yeah, Elsie Guevara. I literally asked was, her like three times before we started. I was like, dime como se dice tu nombre because I you wa- said, no, yeah, I naturally <laughs> want to say Guevara. Guevara. Yeah. We literally saw each other two days ago, you guys. Um, we went to a Halloween party, which you got there really late. I got there when it ended. She literally <laughs> did, you guys. En cuanto llegó, hicieron 20 minutes and the DJ was like, last call for the last song. And we were like, La muchacha apenas llegó. Como que ya el party se acabó. But we have her here, you guys. Después de tantos comentarios diciendo, bring Elsie, bring Elsie, bring Elsie. Hasta que por fin les hice caso and I brought her. We've been planning this for a while. Yeah. Though. It's Literally been a long for a while. Time. I think for almost a year now. You know what's crazy? I think we talked about it when we started talking again. Yes. Actually, when we filmed the mukbang, when, that yes. was like the first time. Yeah. We're like, hey, we should fucking film Noche de Pendejadas. And I feel like Elsie was like probably thinking like, oh, I'm kind of like not wanting her on the show because I would not bring it up. Pero es que yo quería aspirar hasta el último, you guys. If you guys don't know, the season's coming to an end. Oh, so I was yeah. like, I want to wait for the best for last. So, es ahí se esperar, you guys, pero con you're buen like, motivo. But you're not the last one. Ah, but you're not the finale, <laughs> babe. Ah, All right, you guys, so para empezar, vamos a empezar con el chisme. Antes de que empecemos, I want to go ahead and turn it to Elsie para que ella nos diga un poquito más de quién es y qué hace. Well, my name is Elsie. I am a YouTuber. I'm on Instagram. I'm pretty much on every social media platform that you can think of. I have a two-year-old. I post a lot of content with my baby girl, I'm sure. I feel like a lot of people know me as being a mom. My sisters and I, we have a clothing store called O3 Fash. It's been around for years. And yeah, I'm just, I started on social media and here I am. Yo te quiero conocer un poquito más. I feel like I know you, but I feel like yo te quiero conocer more of like the behind the scenes, the upbringing, and how you started it all. Voy a empezar con la pregunta que le pregunta a todos. How was Elsie growing up? How was your childhood? How were your struggles, your victories? Cuéntame todo. It was rough. It's six of us. I'm the fourth from six. And we grew up with a single mom. We grew up in South Central. I'm usually very open about where we grew up. We're a Salvadorian. And our childhood was, it was rough. Like we went to therapy as, as kids growing up. We were in a foster home for like a month. My mom and my dad, they were fighting for us at court. So it was, it was tough. Um, yeah, and then we had our social workers. We grew up with EPT stamps. We grew up with like Section A and all of that. I just remember, I honestly remember, I feel like my childhood, I just remember my therapist, our social workers, us being with just like a lot of random people and then a lot of attorneys. Me and my siblings, we pretty much had to grow up. No, I'm sorry, we pretty much had to raise ourselves because my mom was working two jobs she was i mean she was all alone we don't have family here in california i don't even know like a single one of my tios oh, or, shit. or tios like I don't personally know, not even through face i don't know any of them oh i shit. only know uh, two cousins in miami and that's it and I, we have a cousin here but oh. he's like older so he we don't really like see him or talk to him we talk to him here and there but we don't have family <laughs> Um, you guys have each other. Yeah, That's we it. literally, yeah. we, me and my sisters, we always tell each other that we literally, all we have is each other. So that's pretty much how we grew up. We just grew up with a babysitter um, that my mom still talks to. It's, it was actually my mom's best friend. Yeah. We just grew up, you know, like a typical of South Central, like LA life. If you guys are from the area, like we grew up getting on the 204 bus, the 754 bus, like the Metro bus, like 
that's pretty much how we we just raised ourselves. We had to try to cook for ourselves while my mom was trying to work these two jobs. Um, and yeah, it was just... It was tough. It was a lot. Do you it feel like growing, growing up. up because you were, like you mentioned, you were in and out of the system, you know, with foster care, with, you know, court dates and everything. Do you feel like that affected you negatively? Or do you feel like if anything that gave you like that power to be like, you know what? I'm going to grow up faster than like people my own age and I'm going to figure it the fuck out. I feel like a little bit of both. So it definitely made me mentally strong. That's 100%. Like, I think if it wasn't for my childhood, I wouldn't be mentally, like, and physically just there. Um, but it almost, I feel like as you're going through all that, especially as a child, you don't really understand it, nor do you feel it. Yeah. Like, nor do I, I honestly feel like everything just went like this. Like, it just almost feels like, I don't know, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, you don't ever feel it as you're going through it. But now that I'm older and I look back and I'm just like, what? You're like, what the hell? Like, that was my childhood. That's why I, I just feel like I take pride and joy with, you know, with the woman that I am today. And because I feel like I made that little girl proud. And that's. And I, you I should be proud because yeah. you've accomplished so many things. Do you feel like a big part of you was maybe because you were such a little girl? And for you, maybe what was going on, even though now as an adult, you're like, oh, that's not a normal childhood. Maybe for you at the moment, it was like, oh, that's all I know. Like maybe that's every like, kid's going through Literally, this. that's all. Like yeah. we grew up seeing like your local taco men get killed. Damn. Yeah. Like that's, that's, that was normal to us. And that was just, just, I don't know, just everything that like it's, it was just rough like seeing like if you guys are familiar with like Hoover Street and like all yeah. like the hookers and strippers being there like that's that was my normal like yeah. seeing all of that um, but I just feel like it. I'm also very grateful for it because I just wouldn't because anything and everything that I accomplished and I succeed I feel like I'm super and extra grateful for it because I never in a million years thought that I could even get like a sponsorship from you know a small brand or just anything or even a big brand yeah like, you're like so, what the hell I work with this company and I grew up buying them like that's exactly. crazy yeah so that's why I'm just like I always my mom always tells me just pray and just thank God for everything that you have because we barely had, and we literally had help from the government, from our social workers, from everyone that you can think of. Like, my mom used to sell pupusas too. Aww. Yeah, we used to have like. Are they good? Ah, she's like, no. I'm like, they're okay. No, I'm just ah, like, no, I no, no, no. better. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were good. Yeah, she would always sell out. So, you know, thank God. Ah, she's always. like, sell out queen. Yeah. So, do you feel like maybe because of, you know, the circumstances and like the place you grew up, maybe that made you even more hungry to be like, you know what? Like, I'm grateful for like the life that my mom was able to give us, but yo quiero más. Yes, 100%. I just remember all of my sisters and I, we always, always told ourselves, especially one of my sisters, she would always say, oh, I'm going to find myself a rich husband. And we will, we always just spoke very like, oh, watch, like one day we're going to take my mom out of the hood. Like we're as young kids, yeah. we were yeah, like no, yeah. teens, like 13, 14, we were just like, oh, we're going to be rich one day. And one day we're going to buy this and this and this. Like, but it's just, yeah. And I feel like it's so crazy because mucha gente a lo mejor te mira a ti, te miran a tus hermanas. And they're like, oh, maybe they got it good, like all their life. Especially because, you know, you guys have a successful business. You know, you're on social media. You're, if anything, one of the most successful Latin creators in the space. And you would think like, oh, no, esta muchacha se le dio todo on a silver fucking oh, spoon. Right. And it's like, girl, no, I had a fucking work my ass off for lo poquito o lo mucho que tengo. This episode is brought to you by Surfshark. The internet is getting more dangerous by the second. Hackers have way more ways to target you. Trackers are following your every move and malware is hiding all over the web. Luckily, there's a solution. You can get a VPN. It will hide your real location, making you more difficult to identify and target. But privacy and security are not all that Surfshark has to offer. If you use a VPN, you will forget about geo restrictions. You'll be able to access everything from news sources to social media apps that are unavailable to you because of your location. Just change your virtual location and access all the entertainment you want safely and securely. Get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deal slash Alanize. Enter promo code A-L-A-N-N-I-Z-E-D for 83% off and three extra months 
free. That's surfshark.deal slash Alanize. Enter promo code A-L-A-N-N-I-Z-E-D for 83% off and three extra months free. With that being said, let's get back into the video. You know, as you started becoming a woman, yeah. how did you, you know, how were you in high school? Were you peleonera? Were you the calladita one? Were you the one que no se dejaba? ¿Cómo eras tú en high school? Oh, in high school. I actually went to five different high schools. So I went to my first high school was manual arts. Um, I went there for like two years and then um, I didn't have enough credits. Do you remember like yes. how credits uh -huh. worked and all uh -huh. that? And then I just, I ended up just going school after school after school after school. And my high school was interesting. Like, I feel like I was very, I was such like a tomboy. Yeah. Like anyone, like I still, and to this day, I still have my high school best friends that I talk to. And they can tell you, like, I was very much a boy. I was very much like, very like, I just, I was drama free. I, I, to this day, like, I just feel like I never liked the drama i i feel like a lot of people didn't really mess with me like i yeah. i can't really say like oh i used to get bullied in high school because i didn't really like you were to yourself yeah like i have i just feel like my high school was super it was fun it was crazy it was wild i had my older sister that probably helped me not get bullied because everyone knew yeah. my older sister well, patty I, yes everyone knew her as like okay like you mess, yeah, you mess with her you yeah. mess with her you mess with patty yeah so everyone knew um, yeah, everyone knew us. I was like, those are Patty's little sisters, so we're not going to fuck with them. Ah, no las toquen, eh, porque les va a ir mal. So, you know, you grow up, and, you know, obviamente nunca in a million years did you, dis did you think your life was going to be what it is now, you know, being mm. so successful, having all these opportunities come through social media. How was that? ¿Cómo empezaste? What were your first, you know, steps into even the industry? Because I know you have a background in, you know, the industry that a lot of people don't know. ¿Cómo right. fue que empezó todo eso? Okay, so I, if you guys have been following me for a long time, I used to be LCO mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. don't, I know you remember. That's how I go, met you. I don't uh -huh. go way back yet. So I used to be LCO on Instagram and I would post like headless shots like right here and it would just be full outfits. Just mm -hmm. all different outfits. I would just get my, I would curl my hair. As long as my hair was like, looked super nice and my outfit was cute. Um, and then they, that's literally you didn't all care about the post. glam no like I literally I would hide myself so nobody even knew who I was like yeah. my face and then I would post like layouts I would just post like just outfits and then um, one day I actually got a message from Fashion Nova period so I got a DM and I was 17 I was so young I remember I got a, a message from them and they wanted me to go inside of their HQ to film social media content for them so they were just like testing me out so I went in, I did it, and they liked me. They actually offered me like a, a, a whole job to be with them. Damn, at yeah. 17. And I was in high school when all this was happening. And this was when Fashion Nova was having its prime. Like they were blowing up, right? It, not yet. Oh, not actually, yet. No, not yet. Okay, so okay. I remember it was the very first warehouse that we, we like, if I, I owned like it. The, not, I owned <laughs> no, Yeah, the very first warehouse that I worked at with them was in um, downtown Oh, and it was, shit. Yeah, and it, it wasn't... It was a pretty good size, but it wasn't as big. Um, not what they are now. Absolutely not. Yeah. yeah, they are, like, on a whole different level now. So I went in. I would go in every single day after school. I remember um, I accepted their job offer, and I was just like, fine. You know, like, I'm... I was young. I was just like, I love doing what I do. Like, if you guys like it, then, hey, it works for, for, for us. Like, they're paying me, and you know. So they literally hired me to work for, and I would work side by side with the owner. Okay. Like, literally side by side with him because I that was when we were running their his social media content, and yeah, like all the outfits, all I wish I could find photos, but literally all of their old old layouts, like, and I remember I would watermark them for us, I would edit them, I would go in every single day after after high school, I would I would work five days out of the week. After high school, I would take the bus or I would Uber to the warehouse. And then I would just, I would be there probably up to, up until like seven to eight. And then, yeah, I would just go and film like layouts for them. And, and then I want to say a couple, I was with them for like a couple years being with Fashion Nova. That's when my sisters and I, we decided to start O3 Fash. Mm -hmm. And that's when O3 Fash came along. So uh, we started doing headless shots like we, uh, we were doing on my original page on OCL3. We you know just outfits. We were just doing just layouts. Everything just had to do with fashion. Yeah. Outfits, the new trends, 
um we would look at like forever 21 for a lot of inspo like we were just like it was just we were just so into it yeah after we started oh today i pretty much just kind of got like the knowledge that i was kind of learning from fashion nova um and i would just bring it back to old city and as i was as we were building old city i was still working at fashion nova and the owner knew like the owner knew that we yeah. started old city like he like yeah we were just super like to this day we're still super cool with each and other. at the end of the day i feel like even then you were already doing these layouts this these type of content way before right. you were even hired by right them. right yeah. yeah so fashion nova was more of a like a side yeah, yeah like a side hustle like an internship exactly because yeah. i was so young yeah i was only 17 when i started off working with them i was working with fashion Nova for like two years yeah. and then i ended up quitting fashion nova because o3 started blowing up and that's when me and my sisters we focused more on o3 fash and then yeah from there we just went on what's the first thing you do when you wake up is it checking up on your credit score didn't think so at chime that's exactly what they do with their secure chime credit builder visa credit card you can start to build credit with your own money chime reports your payments to credit burials to help you build credit over time their members see an increase of 30 points on average all this with no annual fees no large security departments or credit checks to apply so start your credit journey with chime sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score get started at chime.com slash allen that's chime.com slash a-l-a-n-n escucharon bien chime.com slash a-l-a-n-n the Chime Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank NA pursuant to a license from a Visa USA Chime checking account and a $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to your score may vary and some user scores may not improve. At a network, ATM withdrawal fees may apply except at MoneyPass ATMs in a 7-Eleven or any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance atm otd fash blows up and this is about the same time i met you yes around the same time because i remember elsie was still elsie otd yes. you you weren't exactly who you are now you know like your content in general like i feel yeah. like you would just be posting more outfit pics mm -hmm. you had a following but of course you know i feel like at the end of the day you you know like your following isn't wasn't as strong as it is now oh yeah sure. how did it start like you know what i want to focus on being myself online and creating a following. Como fue eso? How did that even start? So I think my personal, like me being more personal, me yes. starting actually uh -huh. creating content, it for sure started with Alondra. Uh -huh. So I never used to have a personal YouTube channel um, before we both met. So Alondra and I met when we were 20 and we moved in literally two months oh shit from getting to know each other and then we were just like alondra was, was working two jobs and i was still doing old city fash and i had a, a lot of more free time because she would work her two jobs and then we were just like like we're funny as fuck why don't we create a youtube channel together yeah. <laughs> like we were just so bored we were just like why not we live together and that's when we started creating our own um, we created our own channel. We just enjoyed it. Like we yeah. wouldn't even like monetize our videos. We wouldn't even like. For us, it was just fun. Everything just came natural to us. It was just so much fun for us that we continued it, and that's how we started like our Instagram. That's when we would take pictures together, and then you know our channel blew up like super fast within like I want to say under a year. Do you remember what moment did you realize like fuck? This shit's blowing up that I literally can create a whole career from being me. Oh, that's a good question. I think the thing with, well, at least with when we started, we didn't necessarily see like dollar signs with yeah. our content because like I said, we wouldn't even monetize our videos. Oh, shit. It took us, I want to say like a little over a year until we started monetizing our videos. And so we started, I think we actually, at least with me, I think I started being like, okay, so maybe I can make money out of this. I didn't even know I could make money out yeah. of this. I thought I was just having fun. I thought I was just posting content that made me, me laugh, my family laugh, whoever, right? Um, when a brand management contacted me to oh, shit. Uh, manage me. That's when I was just like, Wait, this is a thing. Yeah, like, like girl, like, I didn't what know. the hell? Yeah. yeah, I'm just like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'm just like, oh, I, I didn't know that 
people can get paid for this because yeah. we, we don't even get paid, paid through YouTube. So I was just like, I think that's when I was just like, oh, okay. So obviously if they're interested in managing me, then like, I guess obviously there's they money see there. potential. Yeah. yeah. So I was just like, cool. So that's when I feel like when I noticed that I was just like, so that's yeah. so crazy that you mentioned that like even a year into creating content, y'all weren't monetizing. No, that is yeah. so crazy to like, think about it because I remember when you guys started, you know, creating content, like obviously at the time, that's when everybody was knowing about monetization. Were you guys not monetizing because you guys didn't want to, or just, you guys didn't know. Because I, because I would, uh, we would take turns like editing our videos, right? And we would always tell each other, no, our video looks so much better. We could like edit it like this with this song. And obviously, yeah. if you, if we put copyright music on there, we can't monetize it. So we would literally like not monetize our videos just for good content. We were just Damn. like, no, like, I remember, like, I would tell, no, like, I think this Mexican song or this Sabi song. Your intro. Yes, exactly. Literally. Our intro, Your yeah. old intro was literally a yes, copyright song. Yes, And we were just like, no, we don't want to change anything. Like, we just literally just wanted to be super fun for us, super organic. And that's what, I think that was the main thing. We were just like, we don't want our editing to change. Yeah. Because I feel like our editing was, we loved it. We loved doing it, so. And I feel like, if anything, that's the reason why you guys were blowing up because mm -hmm. I feel like mucha gente cuando empieza un canal, cuando mucha gente trata de hacer esto, lo primero que piensan es, yes. ¿cuánto dinero voy a hacer? Yes, how much yes. money can I make? Will I go from being here to here and how long? And I feel like for you guys, it was always just fun. Mm -hmm. It was always just entertainment. So it was never like, oh my God, we got to do a video because money's waiting for us. No. Right. Ya tenían sus trabajos ustedes. That was that. So you start blowing up and, you know, la gente te empieza a seguir. They start asking like, Elsie, we want more of you. We want more of you. A couple years into, you know, your whole career online, you get pregnant. I do. Alani comes in the picture. How did that, you know, ¿cómo fue ese momento para ti? ¿Cómo fue? How was that moment? And how has motherhood changed your whole life now? So, okay, so... Obviously, I think everyone was surprised when I got pregnant. Yeah. Because I've been super private about my... I've always been super private about, like, my love life, my relationships. Like, I've been just super, super private. Um, and when I announced that I was pregnant, everyone was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. with who? Like, how did this even like, happen? Like, I didn't even know you had a boyfriend. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. Yeah, so it was... It was yeah, it was a big shocker. Um, but it... Alani, she was planned. Yeah. And I feel like she, um, I, yeah. She changed your life. Yeah, I feel like everything changed completely, like, in a good way, though. Yeah. Because I feel like, you, I don't know if you if you believe in this, but you know how people say, oh, if you get, like, a girl, like, um, immature as a woman, but yeah. if you get a boy, it's because you needed love. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. I honestly feel like I was going in a stage I feel like I was going through like a really, really dark time in my life right before I got pregnant. Like, to the, it was just really bad. Like, my mental health was horrible. Like, I was just not talking to my family. Like, it was just so bad. And I yeah. started getting into drinking a lot and doing all this other stuff that I shouldn't have. And then Alani came. Um, and I feel like everything has changed since then. Like, if you guys don't know, I am a single mom. Yeah. I, I'm very, very open about it. Um, and that also took a big old turn in my life. Like I did not expect for me to become a single mom, yeah. especially because Alani was planned. Like her, me and her dad, we were just like, let's have a baby. Let's yeah. have a baby. Like, I like never in a million years where you're like, yeah. damn, like we're going to have a baby, but I'm going to be a single mom. I, I never, yeah. In a, yeah. You're like, oh, I found the love of my life. I'm happy now for the rest of my yeah. life. Yeah. Especially because, like, you would think, like, oh, like, we all saw my mom growing up as a single mom. And my mom would always tell us, you, you guys, please be careful who you guys have kids with. Like, you guys, you know, you don't want to go through, like, a rough patch. And then I did the, co the complete and opposite. you're like, fuck, mom, I, I should have like, listened. Listen to you. No, but, but yeah. you know what? I, I feel like at the end of the day, like you said, you know, seeing, it's so crazy because I always tell you, I always tell Elsie that that Alani has such a strong personality. She like does. sometimes, girl, like I can literally watch a video of just Alani and I can <laughs> crack the fuck up. Like your little um, Instagram stories get you're always posting of her, like the period app. Period, that <laughs> had me fucking dead. You know, and when I see videos of you with her, like, you know, when you record your guys' like just interactions, it literally feels like 
you are hanging out with your best friend. That's literally what it feels like yeah. when if, when somebody asks me, oh, like, is it hard being a mom? I'm like, no, it's not. Like, with me, I'm speaking for myself because yeah. I don't want to... Um, I, it is hard. Yeah. So I don't want to discredit moms who have it, you know, don't have it easy. Like, it's super hard being a mom. But for myself with Alani, I just feel like she is such, a, like, a mini me. Yeah, like, like, she matches your energy. Yes. Yeah. And I just feel like it's so, it's more fun with her. Like, yeah. she's made motherhood 10 times, like, just fun and not hard. And I, I'm, I'm just so happy and blessed that she's like that. And, yeah, I just feel like... I can't see my life without her Literally. anymore. I'm just like, you know what? No, like, even though there's court, there's me fighting with my baby daddy and yeah. me fighting with his entire family, I honestly feel like Alani brings in the peace with all of the chaos. Yeah. Like, I just feel like she... She makes everything worth it. She, 100%. Like, yeah. I do not regret having Alani. Like, she was... Like, I just don't regret... I don't even regret, like, the person that I yeah. had it with. Um, I feel like we all... We, we live and we learn. I feel like yeah. it happens to the, the best of us. So I'm just trying to make the best out of everything. You obviously mentioned, you know, you're a single mother. Yeah. Um, we're not going to get into much detail, but for those of you guys know, you know, you guys have had, you know, public altercations, you know, online and everything. But I feel like you guys are working on your co-parenting. How's yeah. that going? I know. I honestly... One one thing I regret, because I know a lot of people are like, oh, you shouldn't regret anything in life. I'm like, yeah. yes, I regret a lot in life. Yeah. And I don't mind saying that because it's it's how I feel. Like, I'm yeah. not going to just, like, you know, I'm not going to ignore my feelings. I, re like, regretted so much putting my drama with the father of my child on social media. Yeah. I just feel like it was just not necessary. Yeah. Like, to this day, I'm just like, why would I do that? Like, I literally cringe at every I, I every time i think about it and just this recent time um i actually had a court yesterday oh brilliant <laughs> like, she's not with her court outfit right now ah, i'm like, like my attorney's right there ah, right he's like ah, he's not telling you what to say no. yeah so we're still it's still a process yeah we went into court for you know the custody agreement last year in august um and it's been a whole year. Yeah. It's been a whole year and we're still going through it. We are trying to do everything off of social media. Like, at least I try to tell him that. Yeah. So if y'all see him posting anything. It's like, it's on, it's on him. And I feel like, like, you know what? Especially like, I feel like with a lot of people, because I've, I've seen people judge you. You know, I've seen people, oh yeah, like, yeah. you know, come at you sideways for, you know, everything that's been posted online. But I just feel like at the end of the day, I feel like people tend to forget, like, shit like this happens all the time yes, in like life yes, yes. you know i know people in my everyday life you know even siblings that like have gone through court issues when like they've you know obviously cuando una pareja se deja y hay un niño obviamente a veces uno no queda bien en verdad it's so hard and it, and si un día una pareja se se separa and they continue being friends a miracle but usually you know right. when you break up it never ends good so you know i feel like for you, it was just so easy. For both of you guys, maybe like it was so easy to like su desperación to put it online because that's what maybe you guys were used to doing, putting everything online, like your right. lives, to where it was just like at the end of the day, people judge you, but it's like, girl, there's other people going through that shit, but they just don't have a platform yeah. where like the whole world finds out. Yeah, I agree. I feel like things are out of our control. Yeah. And sometimes we, you know, we just, yeah, we can't control things. And I do get a lot of shit for not like fighting for my family like when i put when i started you know posting about my healing journey me being a single mom like type of content i get a lot of shit for it sometimes because people are always just like you, like why are you influencing moms to like leave their, their baby daddies yeah. and the kid ends up with like separated um parents. you know parents but that's literally that's not my goal at all like sometimes like me as a mom i know what's best for my daughter i know that me and her dad being together she's gonna end up growing up going to therapy she's gonna end up growing up like not knowing what real love is and she's yeah. gonna end up growing up like okay well fighting is it's normal yeah. it's like she's gonna I end see up that shit all the time yeah, yeah. Like, she's gonna end up growing up that all of the toxicness and all of that, it's normal. Yeah. And it's not. So, I have my reasons as to why I like to put my business out there. Because I'm an open book. Yeah. I feel like I'm super, yeah. super open when it comes to everything and anything. Because I don't want single moms to feel alone. Because I know how it fucking yeah. feels. Like, I know how it feels to 
heal by yourself. I know how it feels to pick yourself up. I know how it feels to take care of your kid by yourself. I know how it feels to live alone. Like yeah. I know, I know the feeling of being alone. So I think I put out everything and anything about my situation just for other people. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so others can relate. So others can feel like you guys are not alone. Like if it could happen to me, it could happen to anyone. And like, Especially I just, because I feel like people think that, like, because you got it so good online, they think your life's perfect. And they think right. you're excluded from the going through real life problems where it's like, girl, I'm just normal. I'm a normal girl right. with just a following. You know right. what I mean? And I feel like one thing I will say when shit like this happens, like, it's a great point that you're making that, like, you know, you know what's best for Alani. And sometimes this doesn't mean her baby daddy's a bad person. Maybe it's just it wasn't the right partner for you. And I feel like there comes a point where, like, I know you say that you're doing this, you're putting her first, but I feel like there has to come a point, too, where you put yourself first because si tú no estás bien, if you're not happy, if you're not, no matter what, if you stay just because, you know, you want to make it work for her, she's going to see your unhappiness. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, I feel like taking care of myself is a huge, huge part of my life, not only for me, but for Alani. Yeah. And I just feel like... I love getting messages saying like, how are, you know, how are you doing this? How are you doing that? And that's why I feel like I, the main reason why I do not mind putting my business out there when it comes to everything, all of the chaos is because all I want to do is inspire inspire moms to do better for themselves at the i know it might sound very yeah. selfish but at the end of the day we, all we have to think about is ourselves selves. because and then that leads to like you being the best mom for a kid it leads to you being a good sister it leads yeah. to me being a good friend like it always just follows back with everything around you your mental health your career just everything so i feel like it's it's extremely important and to i feel like that's ex like you said it's extremely important because even i think that way like there's yeah. people in my life that are like oh my god alan you always think about yourself eres bien egoista pero si yo no pienso en mi felicidad mm -hmm. quien la va a pensar por mi and if i'm not happy exactly. everyone around me is only gonna get a negative alan and if i'm happy everyone's gonna get the best of me you know so obviously like for you it's been important for you to be like, put yourself first because 100%. if you're in the best state of mind, you know you're going to be able to give that positiveness and that happiness to everyone around you. Exactly. Talking about social media, you know, yo pienso que social media is a place where it's so easy for people to create these fake narratives, oh. for people to really twist something they see online and create a whole story que a, la vez, que a veces us always been in controversy i guess it's like girl it's not really like that like right. i don't know what type of ima imagination y'all have but like shit don't really play out like that <laughs> how do you feel you know mucha gente siempre ha dicho you know you and alondra are best friends a lot of the time they see you guys just together you know how do you feel about people sometimes saying that you guys are like the mean girls that like you guys mm. can't keep friends that like you know que siempre están juntas porque nadie se quiere juntar con ustedes how do you feel about that and where do you think all this little cheese mess started i honestly think it just starts with like you said we kind of isolate ourselves from like just being out all the time with yeah. like you know everyone um but i mean as i don't know if you guys i mean alondra's very open about it but yeah. alondra struggles a lot with her mental health yeah um so first things first like i feel like she tries to take care of her mental health a lot way before than uh, her going to a function yeah and i think in, i could see why it would make us look like mean girls because we are are we're to ourselves yeah but i just i hate to say this but we exclude ourselves from the drama yeah. we exclude ourselves from dramatic people just yeah we just don't want to be a part of any of that like we just don't want to be a part of any chismes because we've seen it we've seen how i it's just yeah. it's a mess like the behind the scenes of this is a mess yes yeah like, i feel like this industry is it's a mess it, yeah. so i feel like and if that makes alondra and i mean girls because we want to exclude ourselves from every, you know just drama that we just don't want to be a part of then hey, yeah. so be it. At the end of the day, like Alondra and I, we talk and we, we always tell each other, like, 
like should we do that should we do that and on top of and on top of all of that i feel like we have really bad so- social anxiety right, yep like a, a extremely bad social anxiety so when we are out we are like we're like in the corner and we're just like Fuck, like should we like what should, yeah that's how i <laughs> be like, too girl i start sweating i'm like oh my god i'm getting anxiety i'm getting yes, anxiety yes yes like that's how we are so we're just like Fuck, like is it mean if we leave like yeah. and I think the other day, yes, we always end up looking like, like the the bad guys. And we've had like senoras tell us, like older people tell us, like you girls are just like happy girls. Yeah. Like when we're around them in per- in person, and they always just say like you guys just seem so happy and full of life, and you guys should always stay like that. And to us, it's like that's what social media doesn't really get to see. Yeah. If some if older people are telling us this and they have way more experience in life it makes us feel good because we're just like yeah like it's why can others you know why can yeah. others see this like i thought that's all we were you know we were trying to promote here on social media just to be happy just to like so i just i don't know i feel like i also time- just feel like social media took a huge turn where like people just try so hard to antagonize everyone yeah like this is algo y oh my god eso está mal but i'm like bro i just said the word the like how why yeah. am i getting canceled like <laughs> let me know what i did wrong but it's very that like i feel like for the most part i feel like los chismes empiezan porque la gente quiere entretenerse yeah and it's like girl you're not gonna get entertainment in my ex- at my expense like and it's so fucked up to say you know so going ya ya casi para terminar you know growing up from you know that little girl that was in and out of the system growing up with a single mother to a woman being so successful being so inspiring what's something that if you can go back in time you would tell little Elsie ooh yeah I think I would tell little Elsie to enjoy every moment every single moment that life throws at, throws at you, whether it's bad, whether it's good, because I've been through hell and yeah. back. Like, I feel like if anyone were to walk in my shoes, like, it's it, it's been hard. So I feel like when something does, when a good thing happens, I, I wish I could have enjoyed it a lot more yeah. and gravitated to it and just be more grateful for it. Not that I am, but I just feel like, I just wish I could have enjoyed, for example, I wish I could have enjoyed Alani being a newborn more. I wish yeah. I could have enjoyed social media back then and like more. Um, and another one is just be your authentic self. Like I just, I always, always, I'm like, like I said, I'm super open on my YouTube channel, super. And I always, always tell people the last thing I want to be in this world and social media is to be a fraud. Yeah, I just, I, like I don't if it if it's me like talking shit about my baby daddy one day and then like the other day no like like I, then that's how I felt yeah that's your real emotions like, yeah. I don't want to be a fraud like I just faking it for social media I, yeah. I would I refuse I would rather like have no followers than then, me be someone fake on social yeah, media yeah because imagine like you're over here flaunting that your life's so perfect and then in reality you're going through all this shit like. Exactly. It almost makes you feel like you're living a double life. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, when I when I'm going through something and like in real life, it's up there on my YouTube channel. It's up I there on my like, <laughs> y'all can go watch it. Yeah. Uh, no, like I, yeah. I, I, I post it because I'm just like life isn't all butterfly and rainbows. Like, and that's it's me not. too. Yeah. Like yeah. it's very important to like as a creator. Like for me, I feel like a lot of people are able to talk so much shit about me because there's so much that I post from like my brother almost getting deported to mm. like my relationship with my mother, with my sister, with my boyfriend. I share a lot too. And Yes, it sucks because it, you give people more to talk about. Yeah. But it's like, you know what? Like, fuck the haters. Fuck the people that are going to talk because regardless if I'm sharing a lot or not, they're going to talk. Right. I'm doing this for the people that actually want to see my day-to-day life and exactly. what I'm really going yeah. through as a human being. Exactly, yeah. So I think, yeah, my number one poly advice is just be yourself. Like, let the good and bad times roll and just continue to be yourself. Antes de que nos vayamos, where do you see yourself in five years? Ooh, in five or years. Or in the future, like maybe tomorrow. Ah, uh, feel like sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> I want, okay, for one thing that I, I want more kids. Oh, shit. Okay. I know that sounds crazy because you're like, bitch, who are you going to have kids with? But <laughs> I just like myself. <laughs> um, I want more kids. Oh, I honestly think I was born want? to be a mom. 
Um, I want like two more. Oh shit! Okay, so yeah. you want a little family? I'm like, I just don't know who with who. Uh, Five years for sure, and at least one more kid. One more. Yeah, I think one of my biggest like lifetime goals is to live with my mom again. Aww. I know a lot of people are like, why? Like, yeah. you know, that's kind of like going backwards. But I'm like, no, I want to live with my mom. Like, Enjoy her. Yeah. Yes. Like I just feel like I don't have enough of her. And I feel like it's the motherhood that got you because it's yes. like a lot of like teens and kids that just want to party. They're like, I know, no, no, no. Okay. Also, yeah, yeah. but you're, you're like, wow, as a mother, like I hope Alani feels this way too. Oh yeah. We're approaching the end of today's episode. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. If you guys want to go ahead and follow Elsie on all her social medias, I will leave them linked down below as well as they'll appear on the screen right the fuck now y también no se les olvide to follow me on all my social medias so you guys won't miss any future episodes and with that being said you guys thank you so much for coming thank you for inviting me i know we've been talking about this forever for a long time <laughs> yes que pasó, you guys and thank you guys so much for listening and we'll see you guys in the next one bye, bye. guys <laughs>